Hello people, in this video let us look at this book, Pediatric Clinical Methods, 5th edition, Meherban Singh. This book is very useful for your uh, clinical postings and pediatrics. Let's look into it, the contents. In the contents, there is uh, Pediatric Diagnosis Art and Science. Here they tell you <clears throat> don't be over um, confident, etc. Some things like that. History taking talks to you about, um, you know, how you take the chief complaint, the, the basic information, the chief complaints, the history of presenting illness, past history, family history, social history, etc. General physical examination. We look at that. Then, uh, how are you? What is the difference when you examine a child and an adult? What exactly are the differences? Let's look at that. Anthropometry, height, weight. Uh, head circumference, chest circumference, mid upper arm circumference, so many anthropometries are there. Developmental assessment, you will assess a child on its gross motor skills, fine motor skills, language, social skills, etc. Dysmorphic child, let's look at that then. <clears throat> Differential diagnosis of common abnormal physical signs. So, common abnormal physical signs, what are the differentials of that? Skin, musculoskeletal system, elementary system, abdomen, respiratory, cardiovascular, central nervous system. How do you examine a newborn child? Ethical and legal issues in clinical practice, diagnosis of death, or whatever that is, we need to look at that. What is this? Key elements to solve the diagnostic puzzle. The correct diagnosis is crucial to institute the rational therapy. So you will look for evidence, diagnostic jigsaw, knowledge, systematic analysis, synthesis, diagnosis. Wow. This book says, you know, don't be too clever. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be arrogant. A little of PSM here. Integrated management of neonatal and childhood illness. Illnesses. I-M-N-C-I. Chapter 2 is on history taking, guys. Um, so what what is there in history taking? So here in pediatric, the difference is like there's an informant, right? A mother, father, guardian, teacher, anybody. Not exactly the child will tell you the entire history, right? So there'll be an informant. You need to know whether the informant is reliable or not. <coughs> so you, here you will take the basic information, chief complaints, history of presenting illness. If it is a cry, you see, cry is the language of the child. So here they are telling cry is an important symptom of hypoxia in infants with lower respiratory infection, etc. Horse cry, excessive crying, fever, they're talking about fever, right? Here they have explained three types of intermittent fever, quotidian, tertian, quartan. Quartan is more like, see, after, uh, after two days gap, it's occurring on the third day, something like that. Diarrhea. How's it going, people? We are looking at the history, right? History of past illness, perinatal history. So you can ask, right? What is this? Maternal diseases during pregnancy, etc. Developmental history, family history. This is a pedigree chart. This is indicating a consanguineous carrier patients. Oh, this double line is including indicating consanguineous carrier patients, non-identical twins, identical twins. This should be a female, isn't it? Because it's a circle. This is a <clears throat> unknown sex. This is a female child that died. This is an aborted child. It's a died child. And this is the patient because it is indexed. It need not always be the last one. It can be this. This could be the patient. You just index it, right? That's the pedigree chart. Symbols used for constructing a pedigree chart. So you can know this. Normal male, female, unknown sex, mating, divorce, consanguineous mating, women with children from two men. Interesting. So they don't know the father, who the father is? Oh, they know, they know. Okay, okay. Some things like this. Immunization status, very important. National immunization schedule. Carpopedal spasms in a six-year-old child due to die George syndrome. <clears throat> Many photos in this book are not suitable for YouTube, so we will skip those photos. What is this? Physiologic hypertelorism with normal alignment of eyes. This is hypertelorism. Child also has Sebor ho Hoya capitis. Okay. Ectodermal dysplasia, absence of scalp hair 
eyebrows and eyelashes are um, okay with absent or conical teeth so in general physical examination they are also examining the ear right ear nose throat basically in general physical examination they are going by the general appearance build nutrition anthropometry developmental assessment vital signs head and face eyes the so head to toe they are going basically eyes ear nose throat neck <clears throat> skin deficiency status bones joint genital sexual maturity rating so how what are the differences when you physically examine child and adults what are the differences in physical examination basically <clears throat> they are saying that in children right the informant is the mother or anybody else right so <clears throat> the history could be imprecise immunization is history is important you may have lack of cooperation right and here nutrition anthropometry all these are very very important developmental defects right congenital defects chapter 5 is on anthropometry for assessment of nutritional status we are here we have finished about just about this much let's go quick so here they are talking about weight there is some concept of corrected age for prematurely born babies okay so weight you will check then height right here they are measuring the mid upper arm circumference chapter 6 is developmental assessment here they are showing you some milestones like steady head control plays and laughs at mirror holds feet and tries to put toes in the mouth etc this is uh, the dysmorphic child here they are talking about the abnormal shape of the head right face facial dysmorphism what and all parameters you need to look at in the face here they are talking about a uh, partially recovered bell's palsy here they are showing pre auricular skin tags i think it's not very clear porter faces patau syndrome bilateral cleft lip and palate with a lot of other features which they have shown here chapter 8 is on differential diagnosis of common abnormal physical signs here they showing you failure to thrive low birth weight baby growing as a constitutionally light child this is hydrocephalus congenital hydrocephalus with marked frontal bossing that was this is the one with marked frontal bossing and this one is post meningitic hydrocephalus this is rhabdomyosarcoma proptosis of left eye chapter 9 is skin and its appendages strawberry nevus on the face infantile eczema i think this book is good has lot of images right and now we are in the musculoskeletal system look at this bowed legs genu varan okay alimentary system abdomen landmarks for measuring hepatosplenomegaly what are they doing here by manual palpation for kidneys respiratory system we're almost done guys just a little more cardiovascular system now looking for water hammer type of pulse what is that water hammer type of pulse coming to the nervous system let's see what is there here what is this stroge weber syndrome this some on the right side partial simple seizures on right side nevus flammus typical intracranial calcification railroad track type this one is important guys look at this they are uh, examining the child for neck rigidity in a struggling infant the head is suspended beyond the edge of the table the infant shall try to relax his neck in this position the head is then flexed to look for neck rigidity eye examination paralytic squint sixth nerve palsy this is trousseau sign being elicited by the inflammation sorry inflating the cuff of the sphygmomanometer interesting then 
15th chapter guys examination of newborn baby this is asymmetric crying faces this one is cleft lip and cleft palate palate what is this pure robin syndrome micrognathia retrognathia interesting gnathia is something that refers to the jaw right so moving on the diagnosis of death what is this cessation of circulation and breathing efforts brain death that's it guys that covers this book here they have the growth charts which you can print and use right something like this so this is for a boy i think and this is for a girl so here what are they showing birth to how many years is this Three years because here it's written 36 months looks like so this one will be the weight and this one will be the length they don't call it height they call it length for the child okay they have also given you some charts you can directly refer the values for a particular age what should what the value should be that's it people so this covers this book pediatric clinical methods by Meherban Singh very useful book because of the photos, right? Nice. See you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye.